Deputy Sage. Thank you. This bill, the Environment Canterbury Transitional Governance Arrangements Bill, is an abominable bill, and the Green Party will continue to strongly oppose it. And one of the first things that a Green Party in government next year would do is to repeal the bill and restore a fully elected regional council to Canterbury. And the, the Minister stands up to speak on the bill. I'm sure we will hear a lot of cant and misinformation about the state of Environment Canterbury prior to his axing regional councils, the regional councillors. He did it again in question time today. He talked about there being no red zones. Well, Minister, there were red zones, and the elected regional council was in the process of reviewing the resource consents, the allocation of water takes from groundwater in those zones. Minister, there was already a Canterbury water management strategy because that had been developed by elected councillors and the strategy finalised before you axed them. There was already a natural resources regional plan which, while not operative, was in proposed state and was picked up by the appointed commissioners a couple of months after they were appointed. So the, this bill, I would like to explore in part one the relationship between the Local Government Act and the bill, because Clause 7 talks about um, the relationship between uh, the Local Electoral Act and the Resource Management Act and this bill. Mr Speaker, the purpose of the Local Government Act is to provide for democratic and effective local government. And democratic local government is an important check on the power of the executive. It's a legitimate expectation in our society that we should be able to elect people at the local and regional level to represent us, to make decisions about the rates that we pay and how those rates are spent. $80 million odd of rates in Environment Canterbury. But the second class model that this bill provides with seven elected councillors and six appointed members mean that nearly half of the people around the table will not be accountable to Cantabrians for the decisions they are making about the spending of taxes in the form of rates. That is not democratic. And the purpose in this bill is not about improving democracy. It's mechanistic. It continues to deprive Cantabrians of a fully elected council. And as one submitter um, said, it substitutes John Summers it substitutes um, and provides a cheap, fair ground consolation prize with this notion of only being able to uh, elect seven councillors. And as Mr Summers said, he, history shows that power is addictive, not readily relinquished. The only bill we should be talking about today should be complete democracy, not this watered down version that the government is bringing to us because by removing that fully elected council, we are removing a check on the power of central government. Many submitters commented on this. The Law Society noted that it removed that underlying relationship between the citizen and the state at the local level uh, by removing that accountability um, to ratepayers. And the Associate Professor Bromman Hayward, the head of the Department of Political Science and International Relations at the University of Canterbury, commented in her submission that this bill was implementing a form of governance that Canterbury University teaches students about in developing economies where governance is at risk of corruption, gerrymandering and undue influence on the democratic process. So this national government should be ashamed that it is putting in place a regime in Canterbury that applies absolutely nowhere else in New Zealand, even in Kaipara, where you had a 50, million, 50 to $60 million blowout in spending by that council, commissioners being appointed. This year, citizens in Kaipara will get the chance to elect their local council. Why do we have this mixed model, the second-class democracy that the government is imposing on the region? Well, Mr Chair, it's because of water. The fact that 60% of the water allocated for irrigation in New Zealand is used in Canterbury. So this very partisan bill is enabling the government to keep its fingers in the till and ensure that water management plans in Canterbury are 
amenable to irrigators because, of course, it was Irrigation New Zealand that went crying to government in 2010 when an elected council sought to improve the flows. Mr Chair, Mr Chair. Mr Chair. Uh, Mr Chairman, uh, I'm not 